Hi guys, my name is George and today I have a very special guest. He is the newly crowned Mr. International Thailand 2023 and he was crowned four days ago in Sunday. So I know that he has a very hectic schedule. So I'm so <laughs> thankful that he got the time to talk to me. Uh, as I heard, tomorrow is the day one for the Mr. International. So we have a very tight schedule. So how's everything going on? Well, as you said, everything is quite a little bit hectic before coming into this uh interview i also just had a fitting for my competition for one of the outfits so you know it's a little bit overwhelming but i'm enjoying it so far you know it's not every day you're going to be crowned mr international thailand so i'm taking making the most out of it that's true so let's start the interview with uh, introduction so for the people who may not know much about you can you give a brief uh, information so your age your education background yeah sure um well first of all i'm kim goodburn um, Mr. International Thailand 2023. I'm currently 24 years old and uh, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Computer Engineering at Mahidon University International College. And currently I'm working as a model and an actor in Thailand and also a, a tech consultant. <laughs> you have already graduated, right? Your course? Yes, yes, already graduated for around a year and a half. Okay, that's great. So now you have a uh, time to focus on your work. I know you work as an actor, model, so now we can completely you know, focus on the professional side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been actually working since I was in uh, secondary school, um, yeah, you know, okay. since I was like 16 years old, because I started off playing semi-pro rugby for Thailand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of like my basic income just to go out, hang out with friends. And uh, going into university, I started getting into the entertainment industry. So that was, you know, my basic income because I didn't really want to ask money from my parents. And mm -hmm. that was just how I lived by. And, you know, working in the industry while studying is a little bit of a juggle. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm nice. sure a lot of people, yeah, yes. a, a lot of people might relate to that. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that university is done and over with. And now I can just, you know, focus 100% of my time on something that I love and enjoy, which is the entertainment industry. That's good. So this is going to be a rapid fire question. So I have about 10 questions. I'll give you two options. You just have to yep. pick one. So do okay. you prefer to drink coffee or tea? Tea. Tea. Okay. Do you prefer winter or summer? Summer. summer. Right. Actually, actually depends where I am. Thailand winter. <laughs> Okay, all right, because I know Thailand is quite hot, it's humid. Yes, uh, it's way too hot. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you prefer to eat chocolate or cheese? Cheese. Cheese, okay. Um, okay, this is a tough one because I know you like both, but still pick one. Do you prefer mm -hmm. acting or modeling? Acting. Okay, acting. Are you, do you, would you consider yourself as a person who prefers sunrise or a sunset? Sunset. I'm not an I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Agreed. Same here. Uh, do you prefer cats or dogs between cats and dogs? I'm a cat person. Okay. Um, Even though I have a dog, I'm still a cat yeah. person. <laughs> I'm sorry, CK. <laughs> no, that's fine. I have two dogs, but it's fine. I have also cats. I have two two dogs and two cats, so completely understand. Oh, perfect balance. <laughs> yes. Do you prefer to drink beer or wine? Wine. Classy. Okay, we like that. Um, do you prefer to go on a hike to the mountains or do you like to go to the beach, like south of Thailand? The, the beach, definitely. The beach, the beach of course. Um, would you consider yourself as a dancer or a singer? More of a singer, I think. Singer, okay. It's fine. We will not make you dance. It's fine. <laughs> and the last one. Do you prefer to eat spicy food or sweet, like snacks? Spicy. Spicy any day. Spicy. Okay, we, we like that. Is it because you're from like, the northeast of Thailand? I know there's like a lot of like super spicy food, right? Like super spicy. I food. think that is partly the reason. And I just think spice makes everything so much better. There's a phrase that Mark Weens uh, says on his YouTube channel, my pet, my gin. I also live by that phrase. Not spicy, I won't eat it. Yeah. That's good. Since you, you can handle spicy food, when the international, you know, Mr. International delegates come, like you can... Mm -hmm. Let them try some spicy food. Maybe not like completely spicy, like mild. <laughs> you know the one yeah. like international foreigners can handle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give them like a mild level of spice because I know a lot of people, uh, you know, can't really handle any level of spice. 
So, you know, I'm, yes. I better ask them before I give them anything. <laughs> True. And I think you're going, to, you're going to meet them tomorrow. So a lot, right? Yeah. Like, you're going to have a lot of interaction. That's great. I have been also following the social media. And I think like a couple of the guys have already uh, landed in Bangkok. So you're going to have a yeah. good time. What made you decide to join the Miss International Thailand pageant? Like, what was the reason behind joining this particular national pageant? Um, one reason was that actually I worked with the pageant owner in Thailand, the, the one, the, the person who organized the Mr. International Thailand. And I know his standard of work was like of a high level, of a high standard, because he's been doing fashion shows for his sportswear brand. And mm -hmm. so I saw his show last year, Mr. International Thailand, and I thought it was a really, really good stage. And I said to myself, if one day I was ever to join a pageant, it would be Mr. International. And I think it was at a time when, you know, I've had some acting stuff, I've had series, I've had, you mm -hmm. know, modeling gigs here and there, but then I thought it was time to challenge myself and time to maybe find something that can put me really into the spotlight. And also, in the meantime, make a change to society when possible. Because these things, you know, you end up getting a platform that can influence people. And I think that's also something crucial for Mr. International and male pageants all in all to you know in the end you know empower and inspire the society in some way or another mm. that's so i think you know yeah so i think that's how i ended up here and i think the whole journey throughout mr international thailand was a great journey for me and i managed to learn a lot of things uh from you know all the experts that they brought in to coach us and also all the other 28 contestants of uh, mr international thailand and in the end everyone's you know, amazing. Everybody really developed, and I saw so many guys in the first day. They were like, couldn't do anything, and then it, I, I'm, I'm that kind of person who wants to help everybody. You know, because I've had some experience in the entertainment industry, so I've tried to like, you know, share my knowledge, share what I know, and try to coach them in certain things that I think I can coach them. And it's just, I'm, I'm so glad to see all of them develop into the person that they were in the final. And you know, in the end, we're part of the same organization and we just want to uplift yes. each other mm. you know if they had like a friendship like mr friendship title i think that should go to you i don't know if they had <laughs> a passion, but like if there was i think you deserve that title <laughs> so mm -hmm. i want to take you back like when you were a child uh, did you mm -hmm. grow up mostly in thailand or did you grow up in the uk and thailand like where did you grow i up mostly in? grew up in thailand so i was born and raised here pretty much my whole life yeah uh-huh so can you tell us a little bit about how was like the little Kim, let's say when he's in high school, what type of student was he? I mean, I was always a student to strive for the best because, you know, Asian parents, you know, the tiger mom the stereotype, I had that kind of mom. So she always pushed me towards education and getting the top grades and, you know, really pushing me to do all the activities that I can, you know, have the energy to muster and join. Um, so right. therefore, I think it was, you know, I was an activity kid. So, you know, if you have like a football club, you'll see me there. If you have like a singing class, dancing class, you'll definitely see me there. So I tried a huge range of things growing up. And, you know, in the end, I found certain things that I really loved. And that kind of molded me into who I am today. And that's also education wise as well. Uh, whilst I was studying in secondary school and sixth form or, or high school, um, mm -hmm. you know, I found a love for like science, uh, engineering, computer, computing and stuff like that, and maths. So that's how I ended up doing like computer engineering and also oh. sports as well. Yeah, rugby so you seem to like everything. Like you seem to be very active but at the same time. You like, I don't want to say geeky stuff because like computer science is more about <laughs> like academics. So you seem mm. to do everything. Is that, would that be correct? You seem quite a multifaceted person. I, I would say I am because uh, I think I got to, you know, really thank my parents for letting me try all these things you know i've actually i can actually say i've tried water sports up until go-karting up until rock climbing extreme sports i've done it all basically and uh, i have found my you know my favorite sports but it kind of has helped me especially in the entertainment industry because uh you know advertisement is like a, yeah. you know it pays really well and they're always looking for a certain type of character and they're like, yes. oh, we want someone who can play basketball. And then like, I automatically fit because I can play at least a decent level of basketball. You know, I think, I think you know, being able to do certain things when we're young, it's kind of like we're collecting keys in a game, right? 
And at a certain like point, in life, connecting like Pokemon badges, I would say, like yeah, actually gym leaders. It seems like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then one day you approach a boss, and then now yeah. it's just down to what badges you have that you can defeat those boss. And yeah. it's also like keys. You know, you have a certain amount of doors. Each key yes. can unlock each door. It's something like that. So I think you know I had the privilege of trying a lot of things and gathering many, many, many types of keys. Yeah. All right. So you you were part of the Face Thailand, right? Like I think season two. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how did you end up joining that competition? I think you were really young, like 18 or 19. So like, <laughs> I've seen a video, like a final video. You were like a baby. So how did you end up there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the Face Men Thailand season two, that was when I joined. Um, I was 19 years old. I was in my second year of university. And uh, I was actually an athlete uh, right before that. And I had, unfortunately, I had a knee surgery not too long before that. And then I, once I got over the injury, I wasn't a hundred percent, but I went straight back to the national team and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't make the cut because I was not fit enough. And just when I got cut, I got a call for the casting and the audition for the Faceman Thailand season two. And uh, I actually knew one of the contestants in the f previous season who was also a basketball friend from a different school and okay. he's like a year younger than me and I thought if he could do it I'm pretty <laughs> sure I could do it so yeah. you know I just sent him the application turned up on the day and then luck may have it I got in yes and you were in the finals right so you were a runner-up like the position yeah, I was I was I was the runner-up for that year. yes Okay, that, that's quite impressive. If you, like, that was like the first time you're competing in like a modern competition and getting yeah. to the finals. I think that's quite good. You did tell me you are from Konken, right? Konken province, yes. which is in the yes. northeast. My mum is and, from Konken. Uh -huh. And you also said, I think during the finals, that you can speak a little bit of Isan language. So would uh -huh. you be able to say maybe a line or two um, in your like dialect, like local dialect to the viewers? Yeah, watching yeah, this? sure. Yeah. yeah. สวัสดีครับพ่อแม่พี่น้องครับก็เป็นกำลังใจผมแน่ได้ครับในการประกวด Mr. International Thailand 2023ครับผมก็ผมสีเฮดให้เต็มที่นะครับฝากเลยนะครับขอบคุณครับ Hello uh, please you know support me in Mr. International Thailand 2023 I will try my best Yeah. Okay, perfect I'll put that <laughs> say that as a subtitle because I do not understand <laughs> the second part Okay, interesting. Uh, next question for you is, okay, you talked about social projects, right? Uh, like mm -hmm. charity work, being a beauty pageant winner. So have you been part of any active social project that you have been involved with? And if yes, can you talk about it? Recently, actually, I was uh, one of the MCs and one of the coordinators for a project uh, incorporating uh, crypto and NFTs to help prison prisoners in Thailand uh, by uh -huh. selling their art via NFTs because we kind of like, I, I, I used to work in crypto, I had an NFT project myself. So I'm, I met up with the Thai community and they had this project. So I was also one of the per people involved in the project and we managed to make over 200,000 for the prisoners uh, oh, wow. in the very first event. So that was something that I was very, really proud of. And then also now um, I'm also in the talks with working with a CSR organization in helping you know many many charity work projects and doing like inspirational speaking projects but that is in the works at the moment and I'm sure that will come into full fruition after after the competition ends yeah sure like do make sure to post it on your Instagram as well because you know like you said we, mm. usually people have this misconception that male pageantry is all about like the looks so it yeah. also looks when you have a like, social project alongside you. So yeah. people can see that you're also like, contributing to the local community. Uh, yeah. So you did say you like acting, and I've actually watched your drama. So I think ep mm -hmm. episode three came out, right? I can feel you linger in the air. And I yep. think you played Mr. James, which I think is yes. English. Is, it, is he meant to be a foreigner? Like I could not tell. Yes, <laughs> he yes he, he's meant to be English. Uh, okay. Or English. at least it's, it's kind of vague, you know, because uh, he's... Uh, of an English descendant, but it's not confirmed whether he's full English or half Thai, half English. Okay. But then he still has connections with the higher ups, and he is of like okay. of the high society. 
Right. And in there, you spoke English. So I was like, okay, I can interview in, in English. That's fine. <laughs> so my question to you was actually, how did you end up getting that role? And, uh, and how was your experience working for the, this series, which is quite a new one? Yeah, so um, I actually just got a casting call from my manager saying that, yo, there's this series, um, BL series, that wants to cast the character. Um, okay. It's an English character uh, based in the 1920s, and his character is kind of, you know, charming and um, kind of just, like, elegant in a way. Um, wow. And I thought, you know what, I think I could, I could do that. So I, I turned up to the casting, and it was actually between me and one of my mates uh, who was casting for the role. And then I, I just ended up getting it because I, I, I did kind of think that you know this role fit me quite well because I think I can bring myself into like kind of like a high society kind of look. <laughs> so so I think that that role kind of fit me quite well. And then I think so. yeah, it's uh, yeah. 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 I know it's, it's only been like episode three. I think episode mm -hmm. four is coming this weekend, right? But I haven't seen the the, yeah. the the other one. But so far, it definitely suits you, like the character that you're trying to project. It seems like quite sweet, charming, and yeah, like yeah. like a gentleman, like an English gentleman. Yeah, yeah, that was really what they were looking for. So uh, I think that kind of put me over the edge, especially with the British accent. Um, that also yes. helped a lot. And um, um, you know, yes. <laughs> getting to actually film, uh, it was brilliant. The director. The team, everyone was absolutely amazing, and especially the actors in this series. I gotta mm -hmm. tell you, these are one of the top actors and actresses in the country working on this series, which is usually not the case for BL series. They usually find like uh, new faces and people who just came into the industry to be, right. you know, the main lead. But for this story, all the characters, even just the supporting or like extras they have a lot of experience so i think that kind of gives it more of a gravitas for the for the series itself and really makes it more empowering and really really um you know a great spectacle i agree yeah but i've watched it like up to episode three and it's really good so to the international viewers who do not understand thai there is actually the full full episodes in uh billy billy which is like a chinese website it's about mm -hmm. like an hour so it's the full video, so you can watch it with English subs. So I definitely, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> you should watch it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everybody puts so much effort into this series. And yeah. I think it's, you know, it's actually reaping the rewards. It deserves. So you were crowned last Sunday, right? It's been exactly four days since you were crowned yep. as Miss um, International Thailand. So how is your preparation going? Because I know you're like running around like Bangkok, you know, grabbing <sighs> flights for tomorrow. So how is everything going on? Like, are you, can you still I feel mean, it? Like, you're competing or like how, how is your mindset at the moment? Well, to be honest, uh, joining Mr. International Thailand, I had less than a month to prepare because mm -hmm. I knew I was going to join two days before they closed off the registration. No, actually okay. one day before they closed off the registration. And I had two weeks to prepare before the audition and then the whole camp. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to kind of like these last minute <laughs> jobs, last minute pressure calls and stuff so i think you know i'm just going into this competition the way i always just you know uh uh focus on life just you know roll with it i think that's the most important you have to adapt to what's in front of you in order to survive really and that's i think true. that's how, how, I'm gonna, how i'm gonna just approach it but obviously i need to keep training you know keep yeah. the body uh fit and also be on a diet that's also you know uh, the situation right now, but uh, I think I'm ready. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, watching your final like performance, I definitely think you are ready to like go. I know you only had like less than a week until you actually enter the international pageant, but I think you already had like a, more than a month, right? Preparation for the international mm. uh, for the national pageant. So it was quite yeah. a long process. I think that already made you ready to compete for the yeah, yeah, yeah. That was quite a process as well. And I think you know I was actually one of I had the best version of myself. Uh, during the finals and i'm probably gonna have an even better version of myself for the the mr international finals as well so you know we'll see how it goes but i'm definitely going to try my best yes and we're excited to see you as the host delegate giving the best hospitality to all the international contestants coming to bangkok because you know it's happening in bangkok right the host city for the finals yes the finals will be held in bangkok however we are taking all the contestants to a utr 
for five days, I think. Uh, and that's a huge cultural city for us as well. And that used to be the old capital city of Thailand way back in the days. So I think they're all going to enjoy it. And, you know, to see all the sights, um, it will be an amazing spectacle for all of them. Oh, I can't wait to see all the delegates and also you wearing the, the Thai traditional outfit because it's beautiful. It's like, a, yeah, like it feels like you're back in time, like when you go to Aitia. It's, yeah, 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 definitely. Ancient, like go back in time. Anyway, talking about after the pageantry, so what is your future ambition after you, you know, let's see, give the crown to another guy, right, like next year. What is your mm-hmm. future ambition? My future ambition is actually just to try to take my acting career a little bit further. I think, you know, I've really found something that I love and something that I can really, you know, push towards. And I mean, I've, I've had a lot of amazing support from all the people around the world. Some have been saying that, you know, I had Hollywood potential and I was like, oh, that means a lot to me, you know, just <laughs> getting the validation from like fans around the world. But, you know, yeah. I'll always try my best no matter what I do. Uh, that's just how I am. So I'm going to try my best, but I'm also, you know, looking into developing certain products for wellness as well. Um, whether that's, you know, hair care, you know, facial care, because um, I've got people researching products for me at the moment. And hopefully I get to launch something by next month because we've been working on something for a couple months now. And I right. think it's about time. <laughs> it's kind of funny you say that, like Hollywood, because like when I was watching you, like the performance and the final event you kind of had like similar vibe as like james dean like the old hollywood where you like classic so it's kind of funny to say that because you do remind me of him and like i know he's from like the old hollywood era but Mm -hmm. i want you to know who is your personal like fashion inspiration because the way you present yourself it seems kind of like old hollywood so who is who inspires Mm. in terms of his style in terms of style oh that's kind of difficult um i think in terms of style, I really look up towards like uh, Johnny Depp when he was younger, and also kind of like David Beckham because he's an athlete and like a, All right, uh-huh. he's a huge fashion icon. I think you know those two are some of my biggest inspirations in terms of fashion and how they carry themselves in the you know the media as well. Uh huh. I see it. I see it like a good blend of them. Um, also, you say you're really into sports. So, except for being an actor and model, which I know like is keeping you busy like, the whole like whole week. What do you like to do when you're not busy? So, any hobbies or like interests you have? Yes. Um. I mean, I mentioned earlier. I'm a. I used to play rugby for the national team. Um. I still play rugby. I still play touch rugby now because I got gotta keep the face intact. <laughs> so only touch rugby for now. And um, football, I still play football. And uh, when I really have time, I do play music because I used to be a drummer and I used to have a band. And here and there, I still jam with people, but nothing so serious at the moment. Yeah, so those pretty much are my hobbies. That's interesting. Okay, so you like playing sports and also drums. Okay, I I did not expect the music part. Okay, that's that's really interesting. (laughs) As I said, so, I've, I've tried a lot of things. A lot of things. Sure, you have. Okay. Now, like at the beginning, I was like, maybe he's just done like a couple of sports, but like, seems like you have done everything. Um, I don't know how you have time to do all of this, by the way. Like, you know, there's only like so many hours in a day. Um, anyway, talking yeah. about visiting, I, I've checked your social media, followed you for like a couple mm-hmm. of months now. So I've noticed you have been to a lot of places in Thailand and also abroad. So which has been your favorite city you have been so far, and why mm-hmm. is it so special to you? Hmm, favorite city? Oh, that's that's quite tough. It's either between... No, I think it's got to be that. Uh, it's between Seoul and New York. Because okay. I think everybody had that I- has that idea of, you know, New York being the dream, dream city, you know, the city where okay. dreams are made of. And the first time I was there, I was still underage. Uh, and I was over there with a couple of friends uh, waiting to go to the countdown in Times Square. L- unluckily, we didn't make it into Times Square, but uh, it was still a huge experience being in America for the first time and uh, alone as well. And I really enjoyed it. The food, the culture, um, it was great, but I- I'm definitely going to have to go back again. Yes, you should, definitely. Yeah. New York. Or maybe in the, like a LA area, so you can try acting as well. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe uh, California next time as well. 
So I asked some, you know, on my social media, I'm sure you saw it as well, like I asked the, your fans, your followers, some questions, mm -hmm. like I asked them to ask you a question. So I've selected yep. a couple of them. So I'll be asking you a couple of the questions that I thought stood out. So the first question is by Bing, Bingo Bango 04 mm -hmm. and he asked, uh, is there a special place? I think I already answered it, but still, I wanted to ask the same question. Is there any place or special experience unique to Thailand that you would like to take the other candidates to visit? Unique place? Um, I mean, obviously, culturally, we, it has to be a UTR. However, I think anyone who comes to Thailand has to go to Phuket. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the islands that I love the most, whether it's the uh -huh. culture, the atmosphere, and everything it provides, you know, all the lovely hotels, the old town. I think it's one of the islands that have has everything basically it has a great scene it has a lot of development going on as well so it's got everything and i think the beaches there are also lovely and it's just somewhere nice to relax you know so i yeah. think i'd love to take everyone there <laughs> and it's really fun it's like a very serene but at the same time there's a lot of tourists so it's a tourist place yeah. as well so they'll have good time yeah, yeah. next question is by joy Beku, and they asked what was your initial reaction when you heard you were crowned or like your name was announced as the Mr. International Thailand? What was your thought process going on in your brain? Uh, I was kind of just relieved because, <laughs> you know, it was a month's work le leading up to the final. And uh -huh. just, you know, that like my effort and hard work has been recognized it was just like a huge relief. And, you know, I've done it, mum. That's literally the first <laughs> thing that came up because uh, if, if you were at the event, you would see that right after I was crowned, after all the sponsor photos, I mm -hmm. first thing I did was run to my mum and give my mum and dad a big hug because, you know, I owe this to them and they raised me to be who I am today and I really owe everything to them. Yes, and I saw that they were very proud of you. I saw the pictures you uploaded as well and that was mm -hmm. a really sweet, cute moment. Yeah. The, the next question is by The Moments by Jomar TV and he asks, what makes you unique compared to other delegates competing at the Mr. International pageant? And how confident are you to win the first Thai man to win the international crown? Just two ah, questions. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's quite a difficult question. Something that I'm, that makes me unique, I think is how I'm able to adapt to certain situations and how well I do under pressure, you know, being an athlete and, being a trained actor already, you know, I have to work under pressure a lot of the times and also adapt to certain situations going on, you know, and I think that helped me towards winning the crown for Mr. International Thailand as well, because, you know, I never had the best at one certain thing, but then I was able to showcase a different facet of my abilities to kind of like overshadow what I lacked. For example, uh, I may not ha have the best body in the whole competition in Thailand. However, I had to bring something else, whether that's my, you know, catwalk skills or whether that's just like the charisma that I can bring out. You know, those things kind of overshadow just my physique alone. And I think that really helps towards, you know, getting me to where I am now. And I think I'm definitely going to bring that to the table into Mishta International 2023. And uh, what's the second question again? The second question was, how confident do you feel to win the first Thai man to win the Mr. <laughs> International title? Yeah, that was the second question. I mean, going to everything, you just have to be very confident, you know? I think if you're not confident, then it's just a mentality game now. You know, being an athlete, going into every game, you have to get everything out of your head. You're the best <laughs> athlete in the world. That's how you, you go into, like, a, a final as well, right? Yeah. So I think I'm definitely going to go into the competition with that mindset. And I'm going to do my best. And it would be a huge honor as well to win the first crown for Mr. International 2023 in Thailand as well, in front of, you know, my home, my home yes. crowd as well. That's going to be yeah. huge as well. So I'm definitely going to try my best and I'm pretty confident. Yes, I like your mindset. It's very positive. You're like, if something I have to do, I'll do it. Even if it's last minute, I'll get it done. And I, I like that yeah. you're, you have that very straightforward, very sportsmanship good sportsmanship. So I think that that's good. That is going to be advantage when you're competing at the Mr. International tomorrow. 
So the next question is from Critical Beauty Official, and he's from the Philippines. So mabuhay to all the Filipino fans. Uh, so he asks, what do you think is your life purpose? In my own life, I have certain responsibilities. And one of those main things is to become successful in life and being able to provide for my family. Because as I said earlier, I owe my whole life to my family, my mom and dad who raised me. And you know, they put a lot of money, they put a lot of time and effort into bringing me and raising me. So um, I think it is my responsibility to give back to them when I can. You know, when one day that they're not able to walk around when they're not able to take care of themselves, it is now my responsibility to take care of them, such as how they have taken care of me in the past. And also I think, you know, everybody has a responsibility in society as well, in, you know, bringing change. No matter how small it is, everyone can bring change. It's just, you know, you just have to put more effort if you want to make a bigger change. And I think, you know, just being able to make other people happy, that's, that's really all about it. I agree, yeah. And I'm sure your family is proud of you because you have done so much. You're like what, 25, right? 25, 26? How old are you now? 24, 24. You're 24, sorry. Yeah, you're only 24 and you have achieved so much. And I'm sure your family is super proud of you doing sports, drums, music, and now like a beauty pattern. So yeah, you have done it all at just 24. <laughs> yeah. so, so let's say, okay, it's just a like a role play, let's say I am the previous Miss International, right? Like the reigning, mm -hmm. and I crown you as the new Miss International winner. What is the first thing you're going to do? Well, first of all, like I use all my platform to say thanks to everybody who made this possible. My parents, the people who backed me, all the, you know, the fan club, all the people who have supported me throughout the whole journey. You know, that's <laughs> definitely the first thing that um, I'm going to do. And I also got to thank my country uh, for always backing me in this journey um, and really making this possible and also the people behind Mr. International to, you know, um, make this possible and make this event such a huge event. And then after that, I think I'm going to go back to the plans that I had initially, which was to uh, be part of the CSR campaign organization and really, you know, use my platform to uh, inspire others because, uh, you know, they're looking to get an inspiring speak speaker to be part of the team and i'm going to be leading that team and hopefully i can inspire the younger generations in universities and schools around all around thailand as well um, i think yeah. that's going to be a huge thing that i'm going to be working towards after the pageant as well so uh, winning mr international will really really help towards that as well Yes, we hope to see that in the future as well. And talking about the children's or the students, uh, if I know you have done so much as a child, but still, if you could give a piece of advice to the younger Kim, what advice would you give yourself? I actually had a, this question come up in one of my lives recently. I, I think, okay, I'm going to give a similar answer, but uh, I'm going to go in a, a little bit more detail. I, I'd say that just stick to what you're doing. Uh, listen to your mum a little bit more. And, uh, you know, in the end, one day you will find success because everyone has their own times. Everyone's running at a different timing. You know, don't compare yourself to others and think that you're lacking behind or far ahead. You're at running at your own time and that one day you too will also find success. Just be patient. Yes, I think it's all about patience and just being disciplined because, you know, sometimes yeah. as a child, as a teenager, we just kind of want to rush and be adults yeah. and we yeah. forget to have fun. But I think he did pretty well for himself, you know, being like national <laughs> sports player. I think that's like only few people can say that, that they have achieved that. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, I still have a lot of things to do, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with myself so far. Right. I know because you're from Thailand and it's quite a big thing, but let's mm -hmm. say in the UK or the Western countries, um, beauty yeah. pageants are not seen with a positive view. Like they don't, like there are a lot of people who are against the idea of beauty pageants. How important do you think are beauty pageants in today's world? I think beauty pageants these days are more inclusive now than it was ever before, especially during COVID. You know, I think a lot of things changed mm -hmm. uh, after COVID happened. And I think now, pageants are more you know 
open than it was before and no matter what gender you are you can join now usually now mr miss U universe you know they're more open lgbtq plus anyone can join and also i think male pageants as well who was usually only followed by lgbtq but now i think more people are open towards it and the m and there's more impact towards society that these kind of pageants have because in the end these kind of pageants give people the platform you know to share their journey and by joining uh, up with these kind of like pageants they get coaching they get the chance to better themselves in certain areas whether that's physically or mentally so i think it's all about sharing this acquired wisdom with all with people all around the world and now it's just a matter of showing them and actually taking action uh in order to change those people mi people's minds because uh yeah i think it's going to be a little bit tough but yeah. you know people are used to just seeing female pageants and stuff but i think male pageants are on the rise and if yes, you know we keep I setting it, yeah, yeah if people just keep you know putting out a very high standard uh i'm sure it's just only going to keep going up and it's going to be hopefully one day on par with the uh, female pageants Yes, we hope to see that because, because I, like I said, I, I grew up in Hong Kong and also grew up in this, mostly in London and people that they don't really care, like they don't really watch pageants, yeah. they're like, like busy with their own life, they do other stuff, they like go play football like, like you or like play rugby, mm -hmm. so they don't really have an interest, so hopefully yeah. people like you can motivate them or encourage them to see that it's much more than just the looks, you know, in male pageantry. Yeah. Yeah, I think like in the end, you know, people always look for a role model and I think pageant queens and kings can be that role model and be like kind of like that uh, mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel for certain people because, you know, people like me have a group of people that relate to what I do because, you know, it's all about sharing your own experiences and I think in the end, these role models can really inspire other people as well and really uplift others and i think that's crucial in making our society a lot better as well yes saying that i have a final question for you and this is might be the most important question i'm gonna ask you so mm -hmm. why do you think mr kim goodburn why do you think you should be the next mr international winner <laughs> This is like a final question. <laughs> okay, I'm preparing you because you have like, what, 10 days, right? Until the finals, it's on the 17th. Yeah, yeah, I only have 10 days. I mean, yeah. personally, I think in the end, we want someone who can be a global sp 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 spokesperson for everyone in the whole world as Mr. International. And I believe with all the things that I've learned in life, whether, th whether the things that I've learned throughout my education, throughout my childhood, throughout my you know, time working in the uh, entertainment industry and also being part of the pageant. Uh, I want to share this journey to people of the world and become an inspiration and also use platforms such as social media and TV shows that I will be certainly part of um, afterwards uh, to really share a message of, um, you know, just self-love. Because in the end, you can't really do anything without self-love. You can't share happiness. Mm -hmm. And I really think that, you know, if I was crowned, I'm really going to work hard towards that and hopefully make the society just a much more happier place to stay. <laughs> so I'm so happy to talk to you and just, you know, get to know much more about you and also your background. So I got to know like quite interesting things like you like to play drums and stuff. So I didn't know that. So do you have any final message that you'd like to give to our viewers watching this interview? You can say in both English and Thai. Yeah, just, uh, you know, um, it's my first time being part of a pageant, uh, well, apart from Mr. International Thailand. Um, and I'm certainly going to represent my country the best that I can and hopefully bring back the crown for my lovely country of Thailand. And also, if you are in Thailand on the 17th of September, come down to CDC. Uh, hopefully, you can enjoy the show as well because it's going to be huge. And hopefully, Thailand wins. Woo -woo. <laughs> ก็ยังไงก็ฝากเป็นกำลังใจให้ผมด้วยนะครับผมในการประกวด m r International 2023ผมรับรองว่าผมจะทำทุกอย่างให้เต็มที่นะครับผมเพื่อที่จะคว้ามงใหญ่มาให้กับทุกคนนะครับผมก็ยังไงก็เป็นแรงกำลังใจให้ผมด้วยนะครับขอบคุณครับ
Yes. Make sure to cheer for him, support him in his journey. And like I said, he had less than a week to prepare for the international pageant. <laughs> and I, I know he can do it. He has a great mindset. He's very much into sports. So I think he will use all those abilities to his advantage when he goes to Mr. International tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like very, we are like in this, you know, the right zone <laughs> because he has to go tomorrow to the the pre-activities so once again make sure to follow him on his social medias which you guys can see on the screen also if you like this interview subscribe to this channel it really helps me youtube algorithm really likes it when you like comment share all of that and yeah just support him on his journey because i'm super excited to see thailand hopefully winning the first ever mr international pageant thank you so much george 